Hello and welcome, this is Agent XP and welcome back to another author playthrough. Today we are going to be playing my 15th TRLE and this walkthrough is in a way long awaited because I haven't been able to reveal myself as the author of this particular game as this is part of the Back to Basics 2020 competition and part of this competition involves the players being able to guess the author of the level. So grand reveal, this is my level, Garden of the Four Seasons, and we are going to play through it today. We start off here in this small area. Lara has entered via the double doors behind her, and if we run up to this set of double doors, they will open in front of us and reveal the Garden of the Four Seasons. As we arrive, we find ourselves in the autumn season, and the reason for the name of this level will be revealed as we progress through the garden. So if we run forward, we'll find ourselves at the edge of a small river. And I had a lot of fun building this area. I wanted to create the feeling of an open world map here with lots of places to run around and explore. So if we run up to this campfire, Lara's going to stare at these crates and this is an indication that you can shoot them. Now if you do happen to miss these crates, as I know some players have, then it's not the end of the world. You can progress throughout this level without the laser sight. It just makes things a little bit easier for you if you do find it. So as I was saying previously, the aim of creating this garden area is that I wanted to make a really open space with lots of places to run around and explore. We're going to follow this path and we find ourselves at a small well or pond and there are lots of pigeons around and I think those are really cute objects that were part of the pack. Really adds a sense of realism to the garden to have birds here. And if we follow the path further still, we will find ourselves at this sort of pagoda type building. So we can run up the stairs and there's a vase to shoot. Bit of a shame as that was a rather nice vase. Also, Alara is going to look at this bow and we can pick it up and this pairs nicely with the laser sight that we found a moment ago but as I said previously it's not imperative that you find both of these objects you can complete the level with pistols should you need to then we're going to continue exploring and looking around and this is one of my favorite views in the garden and I love to look at this throughout the seasons we can note there is a gong on our left. We can't use that at the moment as we don't have a gong hammer, but it's worth remembering where it is. If we run back into the open area, you may notice that there is a bell underneath this pagoda. And if you run up to it, Lara will actually stare at it to give you an extra hint that you need to shoot it. And you can do this with either the pistols or the laser sight. The switch is going to open a door at the bottom of the well that we just passed a moment ago. So claim the flares and we can hop out of this underground area and revisit the garden once more. We are conveniently right next to the well so we can dive on in and explore this short underwater passage. Don't worry it's not an underwater maze. I'm not a particular fan of those. So we can pull this underwater switch and a block will lower and underneath this block you can find a key. Lara sometimes needs a bit of persuasion to pick it up though. Come on. There we go. And the camera will show us where we need to use the key. If we swim out of the underwater passage, we will find ourselves in the river and we can use this rock to climb out. I'm a particular fan of the particles that I was able to use to make the splashes on that rock. Let's just take a moment to smell the roses as it were. I designed this whole area to be pure eye candy. 
as well as having lots of nooks and crannies to explore. Speaking of nooks and crannies, we are actually going to go and investigate one, and we are going to claim the level's first secret. So we can run up this short slope into this small sort of cave area, and we can find a shotgun here. So pick that up and we can leave that area. And believe it or not, we're actually going to claim the second secret of the level here in a moment. There are quite a few secrets hidden around this level, but there will be different secrets available in different seasons. If we look up, we can see a jump switch hidden on the roof of this pagoda. So pull it, and the block underneath the pagoda will lower, and this will allow us to claim secret number two. As we progress throughout the seasons, different secrets will become available as new areas unlock. However, it's worth remembering that most of the secrets are limited to each season. So if you miss secrets within a particular season, you won't be able to go back for them. So it's worth exploring the garden thoroughly within each season. So now that we have those two secrets, we're going to run up to this folly and we're going to use the Autumn Folly Key. This is the first of four follies that we will visit throughout our time in the garden. So we run inside and we're immediately confronted by a lever. We can throw this lever and it will open a trap door above us. And we can see up there, there is a jump switch. However, we don't want to use this jump switch at the moment. And it all will become clear when we climb up this ladder. We need to backflip off the ladder and we'll get a message and Lara tells us I need to use that switch but the drop is too far with the trap door open. So we don't want to use that thing yet otherwise Lara is going to plummet to her death. As you see there, I shot the window and ran across this bridge. I do love a good bridge. And Lara is staring at an object on our right. And that is a bell. And we can shoot this bell. And we can either shoot it with the pistols or we can use the crossbow and laser sight that we have just found. I constructed this level in a way that would allow you to use either. So when we shot the bell, it rang and the door opened. Run inside and we get some ominous music and a slightly familiar looking area. And if you're getting some nostalgia here, ouch, you'll probably remember a very similar room from Ice Palace in Tomb Raider 2. Now given that this package was Tibet themed, I decided to pay a homage to the Tomb Raider 2 version of Tibet. So you may see a couple of similarities, especially in this area. And the outside of this building is very much based on the outside of the Ice Palace building from the Tomb Raider 2 Ice Palace and Catacombs of the Talion levels. So as you did in the original Tomb Raider 2 Ice Palace level, if you come over to this corner and drop down, there is a place where the spikes are broken and you're able to drop safely. As you can see, there is a yeti who is very impatient to get out of his cage. And I expect you can guess what will happen when we throw that lever. We get a shot of something opening upstairs and we are confronted by an angry yeti. Now these yetis are similar to the ninjas in TR4. They will block your attacks. And it's a good idea to use the shotgun against them as it will dispose of them quite quickly. And you can pick up the shotgun shotgun before you get to this area as you saw so that can be quite helpful. Now don't stand directly in front of this bell. We can jump up and shoot it with the pistols or you can use your laser sight and a boulder is going to be dislodged as soon as you shoot that bell but it's a helpful boulder as well as a trap. The boulder has deactivated the spikes in the room below and this is going to allow us to use the switches on the pillars. So drop down safely, be careful there are still a couple of spikes active. 
we can now use the switches on these pillars. And each of these switches controls one of the corresponding spindles in the room above. And the colours are significant. There is a blue line on each spindle and this is what needs to face outwards. And after a moment a door will open once you position each of the spindles correctly with the blue line on each one facing outwards into the room. So we can use the ladder once again to ascend to the upper floor and we can go and investigate the door that opened. So we can walk out onto the balcony and from here we get a great view of the garden landscape. But that's not what we're here for. We're going to want to work our way around this pillar on our right and run along the edge of the balcony until you find this pedestal. When you pick up the key, you'll be shown that a door below opened and you'll also be shown a camera view of another set of double doors somewhere else in the garden. Garden. So we are going to drop back down and use this ladder to reach the lower floor and we can now exit through the new door that opened. In case you're wondering what that door was for, we're going to discover this a little later and it has to do with that jump switch that we couldn't pull because a certain trap door was open. So make a mental note of that and we will go back to it in a while. But first we're going to find these double doors and we're going to use the Guardian's Palace key on this keyhole. This will allow us to enter the Guardian's Palace and it's going to shed a little light on what Lara is doing here in the garden so we can save our game and run on inside and as we enter we'll discover a very bright and colorful courtyard area and we can take a look around I had a lot of fun making this it was an excuse to use all the bright colors in the package which I really like so once we're done appreciating the Tibetan architecture we can walk over to this throne at the back of the room and have a chat with the Guardian. It turns out that Lara was expected and she is somewhat confused by this but the Guardian explains that he is the final Guardian of the Garden and that he needs Lara's help. The peace of the Garden is threatened by an ancient evil. He is the final Guardian as all of his fellow Guardians have succumbed to the curse. The Garden was built over an ancient gateway to another region for years the guardians have protected the portal but now the evil has begun escaping Lara says she's sure that she can help the guardian replies that he knew she would it is Lara's destiny she will face four challenges and with each one she will progress through the seasons there is also an optional extra final challenge and Lara's choice here will affect her final destiny I'm ready to begin the challenges says Lara and be safe and choose wisely, replies the Guardian. As the conversation concludes, we will be shown a camera view of some double doors opening. And these are literally just behind us. So we're going to want to investigate this new area. And we'll be shown a prompt telling us that we are entering the Autumn Challenge section. We'll be greeted by some opening double doors and with that there is a very strong wind here. We'll be shown a camera view of a switch but before we try and pull that switch we're going to need to sprint in order to fight the wind and we can run through the double doors and if we stop here we will be sheltered by this bit of rock. We can do a jump back off the slope and grab a very sneaky hidden jump switch. That jump switch has opened up a secret. Now this secret is very much a case of if you don't claim it straight away, you are not able to claim it again because the switch to the left of the double doors will close the double doors and you are not able to reopen them. I originally had it so that you could, but because of the mechanics of this puzzle, I was not able to maintain that. 
So if we use that switch to close the double doors, we'll see the wind beginning to die down. And we can now jump to this pole that was originally spinning in the wind. So we can use that to bet an ornament to reach the upper level. And if we do a running jump here with the higher ceiling, we can reach this ledge on the opposite side of the room. And here there is another switch. So pull that switch and that is going to lower the block on the opposite side of the room so we can use this box and the pole to once again reach the upper level or we could if I jumped in the right direction let's try that again and here we go that time she grabbed it so now we can proceed further along this ledge and there is another switch on this side of the room and if we use this switch we will open up a door back in the main Guardian Palace area. So that camera showed the exit doors opening and the second camera there showed the door that opened in the Guardian Palace courtyard. So a run back out of the Autumn Challenge section and we can now proceed to this open door. Inside this small room, we will find the first of four seasonal artifacts. We're also going to get a camera shot reminding us of that jump switch. We now need to make our way back to the Autumn Folly as we have everything that we need in order to open up that lower trapdoor and use the artifact that we just found. So what we're going to need to do is return to the Autumn Folly and we're going to want to use the first lever that we found in that Autumn Folly a second time. And what that's going to do is close the trapdoor above Lara's head and because the second door opened in the Yeti area that's now going to allow us to re-enter the upper floor of the Autumn Folly and we'll finally be able to use that jump switch without Lara falling too far. So we can sprint back to the Yeti area and we can use the ladder to climb back up to the upper floor once again. And we can then use the bridge to re-enter the upper floor of the Autumn Folly Tower. So if we run back across the bridge, we can re-enter this tower through the upper window and we can see the jump switch there on the wall waiting for us. So we can now safely use this switch without Lara falling to her death and we can see there a camera view of the lower trap door opening at the bottom of the ladder. We now need to return to the ground floor, but because that trapdoor is closed, we're not going to be able to use the ladder. So drop down from the balcony of the tower and we can use the ladder to climb down to the basement of this tower. And I, I took a bit of damage there, was a little careless, but that's okay. So we can now see the receptacle for the Autumn Challenge artifact right in front of us. So I'm going to save and I'm going to place the artifact. And when we do, something interesting is going to happen. An icy cold wind blows from the gargoyle on the side of the tower, causing the river to freeze over. With it, an ice wraith is released. And as we look up, is that snow? So climb up the ladder and as we reach the top, a block will lower to our right. And we're going to want to investigate this first as this will allow us to deal with the pesky ice wraith that is now chasing us. So dive straight into the deepest part of this pool and the ice wraith will eventually melt itself in the warm water. So climb out of the pool and if we shoot this vase on our right there is a small med kit or some bread that we can pick up. I really love that small pool with all the steam coming off it. So now that we've dealt with the ice wraith we can run outside. That is definitely snow. We're shown a camera view of the top of the Autumn Folly and this means that the Autumn Challenge section is successfully complete as the beacon on top of the Autumn Folly is lit up. So as we look around, we can see that the garden has been transformed into a magical winter wonderland scene. This was so much fun to make. 
So things have now changed in the garden. The river is now frozen over and we can investigate the frozen waterfall. And if we pull into this crawl space, we will find a secret. A common theme throughout this level is that with each of the changing seasons, things in the main garden hub will alter. So it's very much worth revisiting areas you've already been to, as things are likely to change with each season. The next thing we're about to find is a very good example of this. So as we walk into the main part of the garden, we can take a look around. And Lara's going to look at this pillar on our right. And the foliage has now died back to reveal a switch. So we're not going to use this quite yet. What we're going to do is run down to the frozen river. And the fact that the river is frozen will now allow us to access this key. This key was in the golem's mouth in the previous season and Lara would look at it and say that she couldn't reach it yet. But the fact that the river is now frozen allowing us to walk on it allows us to grab that key. So we're now going to run back to that switch we saw a moment ago. So sprint around the corner and we can return to this switch. I'm going to save my game here as this switch is actually timed. It is a fairly generous timer, you just can't afford to dawdle too much. So we can do a jump from this pillar, and then a running jump to the next pillar, and then a running jump to the top of this rock formation in the centre of the garden. From here we can do a standing jump to the flat segment of this ledge and then we can pull up onto this pressure plate. And when we do we're going to be shown a flyby and a block will lower on the top of this tower. Now this is the winter folly and on top of the winter folly you can see there is a bell. We are going to want to shoot this bell and we can either use pistols and jump or we can use the crossbow and laser sight that we found earlier. So ringing the bell is going to cause an avalanche. A pile of snow will slide off the top of the folly and we're going to need to find the place where the snow fell as this is going to allow us to do something new. But before we do that, we're going to make a safe descent from the top of this rock. It's worth being careful, as it's quite easy to take damage falling from there. So we're going to run around to the back of the Winter Folly, but it's worth being careful here, as some icicles will drop from the roof as you run underneath them. Now, not all of the icicles are the sort that will fall, but those will, so be careful. So as you can see, I'm hopping up on this new snowdrift that was formed when we had the avalanche, and this will allow you to jump and grab the edge of the Winter Folly roof. We can shoot the windows and enter, and here there is a receptacle for the Winter Folly Key that we claim from the mouth of the gargoyle on the river. So we can open the trapdoor and we can drop down into the ground floor of the Winter Folly, and as you do, the front door is going to open to allow easy return access. Now Lara is going to stare at this mysterious light beam and we're going to save and we're going to try jumping in. And this is a teleport. It has brought us to the winter challenge area. So take a look around. The area to our right is in fact a return path so we can't go that way yet. So we can go forwards and into this mysterious glacier. The icicles above this ledge are only there to make you worry, they're not going to actually fall. If we look up we can see a cool view and we can also see a crack in the wall. So we're going to want to make use of this icy crack. So jump and grab the crack and we can shimmy around the corner. 
Now this area was heavily inspired by the glacier section in the Nepal level of Tomb Raider Legend and anyone that's played that may recognize the inspiration here. I'm going to back jump at this point and then shimmy along the ledge and we're actually going to want to drop down to the crack below and then we're also going to want to ledge jump back up and then do a back jump and grab the ledge behind us. So yes, I really enjoyed the platforming section of the Nepal Glacier in Tomb Raider Legend and I wanted to recreate it here. So what I'm actually going to do for now is shimmy to the right because we're going to go and collect a secret. There are in fact two secrets hidden within this glacier and once again that's kind of a homage to Tomb Raider Legend as there were several artifacts that you could claim within that glacier. So we can jump safely to this flat area and claim the first of two secrets that we will find within this glacier. Let's see how many times I can say the word glacier in this section. <laughs> so let's jump back to this ledge. We're going to want to retrace our steps and go back the way that we came. So grab this ledge once again and we're going to want to shimmy in the opposite direction as this is the path for actual progression. As I said, that other way was just for a secret. So if we shimmy right to the end of this ledge, we can backflip and grab an alcove behind us and we're going to need to crouch and crawl through this icy tunnel and we will emerge at the other end and we'll find ourselves in a different part of the glacier. I used a sort of water shimmery effect on this room and I really love the way that it illuminates the ice in a mysterious fashion. Next, we'll want to run, jump and grab the ledge in front and then drop down to a lower ledge and we're going to want to follow this as far to the left as you can go and then we can jump up and grab a higher ledge and for this we're going to need to be as far left as we can be. Grab this ledge and then back jump, grab and pull up into an alcove and this will give us the second secret of this glacier area. So let's retrace our steps, grab the lower ledge and then we can jump back up to the higher ledge once we reach the right of this ledge. So pull up and we can then pull up on this ledge on which we can actually stand. And here we see another ledge that we can jump to that is on a pillar in the middle of the ice. And then we can grab these poles. We're actually going to want to swing to this slope. From here we can then drop down and grab the ledge below, shimmy around the corner and then backflip to another safe pillar. We can then jump and grab this crack, ledge jump up, shimmy to the left, and we are done with the glacier platforming sequence. So I'm going to save my game here as we're about to enter a whole new area. If you thought that was the end of the winter challenge, you were somewhat mistaken. As we get a grand camera view showing a new massive area with some epic music playing. That's from Rise of the Tomb Raider. And we can see there's a leopard below and we're probably not going to want to greet him just yet. We're going to want to follow the path along these ledges. So after we've taken in the scenery for a second, we can jump to this ledge and we can actually reach the leopard a bit there. He got away. Yeah, that's cool. His AI is pretty dumb and he often runs into walls. There's not a lot I could do about that, unfortunately. I'm going to follow this ledge and we can see a crack in this pillar to our right but before I investigate that I'm actually going to follow the snowy trail around to our left. Some of these jumps can be a little bit tricky so I'm going to save my game here and we're going to do a running jump to the flat part of this slope. 
and we can now do another running jump to this protruding section of wall which is covered in snow and we can jump to the next section and if we do another running jump here we will find ourselves near an alcove with a switch. This is going to cause the first of three fire heads to move forwards and this is going to breathe fire on that massive cauldron in the center of the room. We're going to need to activate all three of the fire heads if we want to complete the puzzle. So drop down to the ground and we can run across this frozen pool and if we look down carefully you might see a gong hammer and that is used for the gong at the top of those stairs and we're going to need to melt the ice in order to reach that and you might guess how we're going to do that. So if we shoot this box we will claim a shotgun and we can now return to the upper trail using a crack and this is just below the entry ledge. So this is just where we entered the room so we can use this ledge to ledge jump back up to this upper level. So the trail I showed you to reach the first switch is actually one of several ways that you can get there but that was the intended path and it's the way that you can can reach that switch ledge without taking any damage. So we're now going to return to this pillar and we're going to use the crack to climb to this level and as we look up we can see several pulleys above us. So we're actually going to turn around now and follow this trail behind us. There are several ledges we can jump to and Lara's going to look at that upper ledge. This is Lara's way of telling us that we can reach that ledge, especially if we stand on the right hand corner of that icy slope. But first we're actually going to follow this lower trail around to the left and it's worth walking here as there are quite a few slopes. And from here we can see a building and Lara tells us we need to find a way to weigh down that pulley. So we can climb into this building and we see there there is a pulley and if we run into the room Lara is going to look at that item in front of us and this is actually something that she can grab hold of and push so we're going to move it onto that pulley. I found these pulley objects really useful for puzzles and I was able to utilize them in several different ways throughout the level as you will see shortly. So as you push the object onto the pulley it's going to weigh it down and this will bring us level with a second pulley. So we're now going to push the object onto the second pulley and this will cause the pulley to lower and if we now turn around this is going to allow us to run jump and grab that alcove. We weren't able to reach that alcove from the floor because of the snowy slope in front of it. So jump and grab the edge of the alcove and pull up and we will find a switch which we can use to activate another of the fire heads and it will move forward and start breathing fire onto the cauldron in the centre of the room. So one more fire head to go. We're now going to make a final trip back to that upper ledge. So use the crack by the entrance area one more time and we can return to this upper level. So run and jump back across the pillars and we can pull back up using that pillar with a crack in it. And you may remember that Lara was staring at that upper ledge. Well, we are now going to visit that upper ledge. At this point you may be thinking that the winter challenge is a lot larger than the autumn challenge and I wanted the autumn challenge to be a fairly gentle induction to the challenges. All of the others are larger but I also wanted the autumn challenge to be a bit smaller because you do have the yeti area and spindle puzzle in the autumn section. So think of the autumn section as a gentle induction. As you could see there, there was a slope so I shimmied to the left of it and pulled up. 
We can now follow this icy trail and it's worth being careful because there are quite a few slopes that want to plummet you to your death if you're not careful. So we can see some more pulleys here and it's a long drop. So run, jump and grab the first platform and as we pull up, Lara is going to tell us that we need to be quick running and jumping from the second platform, otherwise we won't make the ledge and this is because the platform will drop too low. So in front of us a trap door will open and this is simply a quick shortcut to get back to this ledge. If you mess up the jump to this ledge, you can run and jump to the previous platform, as the second platform will raise once you jump back off it. So we follow this corridor and find a final switch, and this is going to activate the final firehead. And now that all three are ignited, the cauldron in the centre of the room will be active. And we can now see a camera hint showing us another spindle, and that is raised to reveal a chain. Pulling the chain will cause the cauldron to drop. It's then going to tip up and pour lava into this channel. That lava is going to melt the ice in the pool, which will allow us to collect the gong hammer. This puzzle does draw some inspiration from Catacombs of the Talion, however it is a slightly more complex version of that original puzzle. Now that we have melted the ice in the pool below, we'll be able to do a fancy swan dive down into the water. We're going to make sure that we are indeed aiming at the water, and we can do a fancy twirl and fall safely into the pool below, but oh no, the water is still rather cold even though we melted it, so we need to quickly climb out, and we should be able to just before we start losing any health. So we can now climb out of the pool and make our way up onto this platform and we can now use the gong hammer that we retrieved from the frozen water. I can use this hammer for the gong back in the garden. Lara is telling us that we can reuse the item that we just used. And if we come to this slope, now that we've hit the gong, there is a ledge which will allow us to quickly return to this ledge where the icicles broke when we struck the gong. Now there was a slight delay before the gong sound appeared, but unfortunately that's the soundtrack. I couldn't sync it any better than that. The original gong in Tomb Raider 2 was the same. So we can make our way to the exit, but Lara says the wind is really strong. I'll need to be careful crossing the bridge. So we should definitely heed her advice. This puzzle was inspired by TR 2013. Some of you may recognize this. It was one of the secret challenge tomb areas. And if we run onto the bridge, the wind is going to try and push us off. So we're going to need to sprint and fight and run into the wind in order to get safely across the bridge. When we enter this room, we can claim some bread under a vase and there's a box and a high passageway so we need to move this a box or piece of furniture to a place that will allow us to jump to that high passageway and we in fact only need to push it one block closer as from here we can do a running jump into this high hallway. As we round the corner and slide down the slope, you may recognise that we're now back in the area in which we started, and the teleport is now active once again. We can't revisit the previous area as a frozen wall blocks our path. So we returned to the garden, and if we run straight ahead from the Winter Folly, we will find the Garden Gong, and we can use the Gong Hammer on this Gong also, as Lara told us earlier. As we hit the gong, a block will lower just behind us and reveal a key. And when we pick this key up, we'll be shown a camera prompt of the Guardian's Palace area. And that tells us that we can use this key on a door on the upper level. 
So we're going to backtrack and revisit the Guardian's Palace and it will be cool to see what it looks like in winter time. So cross the bridge over the frozen river and run back up the hill and the Guardian's Palace is on our right. You may or may not have noticed that the gong returned to our inventory after we used it there and that is because we will need to use that object one final time later in the level. As we run towards the Guardian, Lara is going to stare at the corner of the room. There's now a snowdrift which will allow us to climb to the upper level. Before we do, I'm just going to say hi to the Guardian, and as you can see there, he's having a nice little tea party. I really enjoyed setting up this little detail. Unfortunately, Lara doesn't have time to stop for tea, so we can now run to the snowdrift and pull up on the balcony. And we can use our newfound key on the keyhole. Inside this small room, we will claim the Winter Challenge Artifact. And we'll get a camera hint showing us where we need to go to use this. So there is a gargoyle or statue in the garden. It can be found just opposite the Winter Folly. So drop back down from the balcony and say goodbye to the Guardian for now. We'll leave him enjoying his tea. As we return to the garden, you may notice this trapdoor and ladder, and it's worth bearing this in mind for future reference. We're going to need to use that later on. It's now time to venture back through the garden and find the receptacle for that winter challenge artifact. Leap over the frozen river, and it might be worth taking a moment to appreciate the garden in all of its winter wonderland glory, as in a moment we're going to be placing that artifact and transforming the season once again. So there you can see the gargoyle statue and we can run up to it and I'm going to make a save before I place the winter challenge artifact. So it's now finally time to thaw all the snow, place the winter challenge artifact and we'll get a flyby showing that the beacon on top of the winter folly is now lit and as we pan down into the garden we'll see all the beautiful spring blossom and also another wraith and we'll need to deal with him here in a second and the camera is actually going to show us where we need to go to deal with him. This small cabinet in the ground floor of the Winter Folly Tower is where we need to go to dispatch the wraith. So that is essentially his totem. Because this is a standard type of wraith, he's not a fire wraith or a ice wraith, so he can't be dispatched by jumping into water. So if we crouch in front of this small cabinet, we should be able to dispatch him. Sometimes he needs a little bit of encouragement in order to fly in there, but that was fairly easy. So let's take a look around. The garden is now basked in spring sunshine. We're also surrounded by beautiful pink blossom. So it's time to explore the garden. It's worth exploring the garden with every season change as things will have altered slightly with every season. The snow has melted away and we can now see the ground once again. So I'm going to run up this hill and Lara's going to look at this platform which turns out to be a springboard. Maybe one or two of you got the pun of the fact it's a springboard in spring. <laughs> I, I thought that was amusing anyway. <laughs> so let's run over to this area. The camera showed us that something happened when we threw the jump switch. It opened a pit in the ground which contained another switch and this switch opens the block in the doorway of the spring folly. So let's run around the side of the folly and we can now enter. There are some goodies on this little side table that we can pick up and we can also investigate this hole in the floor so grab the edge there's a ladder so we can drop down safely there's a small pool here and Lara's going to look at this because as well as the pool there is actually a pedestal for an artifact there's also another teleport so you know what's going to happen boom we're going to run into it and we'll find ourselves teleported 
to the spring challenge section. For the spring challenge section, I decided to spring a trap. This is quite possibly the most difficult of all the challenges. As you can see there, there was a lever and it is timed. So we need to quickly jump over all these spike pits, run against the wind, all whilst dodging those rolling blades. And we can slide down the slope at the end. Now be careful to slide down the same way that I am sliding. If you slide forward here, you can take some serious damage, even kill yourself upon landing. So take it easy on that slope. As you could see, there is a yak in this very dark stable, and he's not going to hurt us, he's just there to kind of scare you when you first land. So crawl back out of the crawl space, as you see there, we pulled a lever, and this hidden lever is what opens the door to the stable or cage that we're in and this is a very dark very spooky part of the level and if we look around we can see another springboard and a bell above us but before we investigate that we're going to pull this switch and we're going to get an ambush out of the way if we run into this cage there is a yeti inside and we can use the shotgun to fairly quickly dispatch the yeti it takes about four shots but you do you have to be careful because they like to shield themselves with their arms a little similar to the ninja enemies in Tomb Raider 4 I believe that's what the yetis are based upon if we light a flare and run into the corner you'll find a poor unfortunate soldier and if we pull him out of the way we can pick up a shotgun and a large med kit but we're also ambushed by another yeti so be careful he doesn't get too many hits off on you so it's worth using the shotgun to dispatch him. So now we can leave that cage and we can now investigate this springboard. We're actually going to want to jump on it in the opposite direction, as behind us there is a short ladder that we can grab. We now want to pull up into this small alcove, and behind us we can see a bell, and we're now the right height to shoot that bell. As we do, we'll be shown a camera view of another set of spindles, and one of them turns as we shoot the bell. As the creepy music plays, we can run into this larger open section, and if we cross the hallway, we'll find ourselves in the same room as the spindles. This is where they are located. There's also a door to the left of them, and this is where we need to go eventually. So we need to turn all of those spindles in order to open the door. As you see there, we pulled a lever, and it frees another yeti. And you may be thinking, why on earth did I do that? but there's a good reason because we need to go inside the cage so once we've dealt with the ambush if we run over to this back corner there's another poor unfortunate soldier and if we pull him out we can claim some more flares once we have picked up the flares there is in fact a more important reason that we entered this cage behind us you can see a bell there's also a slope but we can't jump straight to the slope. This box is here to allow us to jump to it more easily as it's quite difficult from the ground. And we can use whatever weapon we happen to have selected to shoot that bell. And as you can see there, another of the spindles has now turned. So, one more bell to go. Let's run into this area and take a look around. And you might notice there is something in the floor. It's another springboard, so jump on it and it will catapult you to the top of this pile of straw. From here you can grab the balcony of the upper floor. So we can shoot this vase and claim some more shotgun ammo. And we can run along the balcony and continue exploring this area. I'm keeping my guns out as here we will encounter some spiders. Creepy. Now you may notice there is another springboard to our right, but we're going to run past that for the moment. If we instead proceed along this balcony, we can claim a secret. 
Now there's some crossbow ammo here in the corner, but that doesn't actually count as the secret. We want to pull up into this alcove. I'm going to light a flare as this room is pretty dark. And if we do a running jump to this ledge, we'll need to shoot a spider as soon as we land. And we can now claim some shotgun ammo. That was the secret. So I'm going to carefully jump back to that alcove. If we had dropped down to the ground, we would have found ourselves back in the room in which we arrived with the yak. But instead, we're going to return to the place where we found the springboard. And we're going to use the springboard, climb up, and we'll find the third and final bell. And we can use the slope opposite the bell in order to get enough height to shoot it with the pistols. Now, of course, all of these bells could be shot with the crossbow and laser a site if you prefer. So the door is now open and all that remains is to drop down safely and make our way over there. Now you may recognize this area a little from Tomb Raider 2 and that's because this section is heavily inspired by the start of Ice Palace. Through this door we're confronted with a slope, but in case you're wondering how to ascend it, all you need to do is jump forwards, lean to the right, and use the two springboards to ascend. We find ourselves in a very sunny and spring-like cave, and to our right is a box. Now that's not movable, but we will use it later on. So run into the pool of water and make your way to the other side. And there is a building on the opposite side of the cave and another springboard. Once again, we want to approach it from the opposite direction as there is a ladder on the wall by the door. So climb up the ladder and we're going to save our game at the top as we're about to do a bit of platforming and it can be a little bit tricky as some of the ledges are diagonal. So we can hop to the ledge near the waterfall, run and jump across the waterfall and follow a rocky trail around the side of the room. We can now jump to this small roof. We'll slide off initially but if you grab it you can pull up on the flat tiled area. On this roof there is one vase containing some bread, the rest are empty. And we can claim the spring challenge key. And this is going to give us a flyby, showing some trapdoors opening back in the main room. This is our return path. So what we're now going to want to do is slide off the sloped part of the roof. And the box is there conveniently waiting to break our fall. Without the box, you will take damage dropping from the roof. Slide back down the slope, being careful to jump over the springboards, and we'll be greeted back in the main area by another yeti. So we need to get some powerful weapons out to dispose of him, and you can probably hear another yeti. He is actually on the upper level. So use the springboard to return to the pile of hay, and we can climb back up to the upper balcony and get a weapon ready as he is going to ambush us as soon as we reach the balcony. Although sometimes he does like to run into a random spot of the balcony. That's Tomb Raider 4 AI for you. There's not a lot I can do about that. That's one of the main reasons why there aren't that many enemies in this level. I had quite a bit of trouble with dodgy AI. If we look down here, this is the cage where we killed the first Yeti. And there is a crack on the wall. And the reason that is there is in case you fall into that cage from above without opening the door. It allows you to leave the cage without being stuck inside the cage. As you saw there, we killed a spider and used the wall crack to back jump to this ladder and if we ascend this ladder we're on the home straight we're almost back to the teleport but just before we get there we're confronted by another trap hallway this one isn't quite as difficult as the first one so we can hop over the spike pit and just be careful not to run into those blades as they will cause a lot of damage. So time yourself past them and 
and we can return to the teleport. We find ourselves back in the basement of the Spring Folly. So jump and grab the ladder and pull up on the ground floor. But once we're out of the basement, you may notice that the entry door is closed. How are we going to get out? If we take a look around and look up, we'll see a trap door above us. So climb onto this windowsill and from here we can jump and grab a ladder. Shimmy to the right and pull up a little bit. Lara needs to get her foothold here for some reason. And then we can climb further to the right and emerge in the upper room. It turns out we're in for a bit of a fright. Oh, what's that? It must have been one of the guardians, now infected by the evil that's escaping. So we need to equip a powerful weapon. I recommend using the crossbow and explosive ammo if you have it. And with that, you'll be able to dispatch the zombie guardian with one shot. You can also kill him with the shotgun, but it takes numerous shots to do so. We can use one of the windows to escape from the upper floor of the folly. As we drop to the ground, you might have noticed that the front door of the Spring Folly will reopen, so we can now go back in there if we want to. But we're actually going to come back over to the Winter Folly, and the purpose of this is to claim a secret. So we're going to pull up on the first floor of the Winter Folly, and there's now a large med kit here which we can grab. We now want to go and shoot one of the windows and drop onto the roof and from here we can jump to this block on the top of this small structure from here we can do a rather tricky run jump and grab to the roof of the pagoda opposite we need to aim for the very corner otherwise lara won't grab the roof and here we can pick up a secret now there are several ways to claim that secret, but the one I just showed you was the intended route. Unusually, that secret is also accessible in the summer, so it's one of the few secrets that if you miss it, you can actually go back for it in the next season. So next we're going to run across the bridge and return to the Guardian's Palace, as we need to claim the Spring Challenge Artifact. Before we go in there, I'm just going to take a moment to smell the roses and appreciate the view. I really do love all the blossom and the colour of the blue sky in this season. So I'm going to save my game and run on into the Guardian's Palace. But, oh no, what's happened? Oh no, the Guardian has been infected by the evil. Maybe I can find a way to cure him somehow. So the poor guardian is lying on the floor and it looks as though he has been infected by the same curse that infected the other guardian that we just saw in the spring folly. So we're going to use the spring challenge key on this door and run inside to claim the spring challenge artifact. As we claim it, epic music plays, and we're reminded of the puzzle hole that was back in the basement of the Spring Folly. Poor Guardian, but hopefully we can find a way to cure him later on. So we're going to run back out into the garden and make haste to return to the basement of the Spring Folly. So we're taking a shortcut there, we can jump over the river and run right back to the basement. And take a final look around as this is the last time that we will see the garden in springtime. So let's drop back down the ladder into the basement. And we're going to save our game before we place the Spring Challenge Artifact on its pedestal. As we place the Spring Challenge Artifact, we're greeted with a flyby. A fire wraith emerges from the Winter Challenge Artifact, melting the ice. And this has caused a tree nearby to grow some leaves, but we'll come back to that in a moment. The camera pans around the garden, which is now in night time, and we can see that the beacon on top of the spring folly has been lit. 
I love how the garden looks at night time, illuminated by many lanterns. And I think if I had to pick a favourite season, the summer season might just clinch it. Although I love autumn and all the other seasons for different reasons. So let's climb back up the ladder and investigate the warm summer night garden. Let's run outside. I really love the ambience track for this season as well. If we turn around, we can see the beacon lit on top of the spring folly. So just one more beacon to go. So let's take a look around and investigate the summertime version of the garden. If we run over in this direction, you might see something glowing on top of this pagoda. And once we get a bit nearer, Lara's going to stare at it in order to give us a hint that something new is here. So the key that we just claimed was the oven house key and we'll be using this in just a moment. But before we do, let's go and investigate the Thord Winter Challenge artifact. And as we run up to it, a fire wraith is freed. So we're going to want to go and dispatch that and the most convenient place to do this is the well. We need to wait a moment until we see the explosion which tells us the wraith has been dispatched and then climb back out of the safety of the water and we can make our way back over to the Winter Challenge artifact pedestal. And to the right there is a sort of hand or creepy tree stump which now has leaves growing out of it in the summer, perhaps encouraged by the water from the thawed winter challenge artifact. As you saw there, we picked up a torch from that pedestal and we're going to use the oven house key on this door and as you might guess by the name oven house, we are about to find somewhere where we can light the torch. So crouch and light the torch from this oven and we can run back out into the garden. But why do we need a torch, you may be wondering. Well, there are several urns around the garden. Now, they used to have plants in them in previous seasons, but now some of these urns are empty. So we want to stand at a safe distance and light each of these urns on fire. It's very important that we do stand at a safe distance, as if we don't, Lara will set herself on fire. So make sure you stand off the platform or in the very corner. So there are a total of five of these urns to a light. So run up to this one and we can light it. And each time we're shown a camera view of the block that these urns will lower once we have lit all five. So there's another one in front of the summer folly. And there's one more left to light, and that one can be found near the Autumn Folly. In case you're wondering how I managed to get four different versions of the same garden, I actually had three copies of the main garden hub map and Lara is teleported between each version. The third version of the map has a giant flip map and this is what turns the spring map into the summer map which is partly why when you first load into the summer map some of the movable objects can appear a little too bright and this is because they retain the lighting of the previous version and this can be solved with a simple save and reload although you may not have even noticed it. I would have had four different copies of the same garden, however I ran out of rooms in this massive project so I had to resort to a flip map for the final season change. As you can see we lowered the block and running inside this room we're actually facing the corridor where we very first entered the level and we can finally claim that key. As we drop out of the alcove, you may notice that there is a jump switch on the wall, and this opens up a secret. Speaking of secrets, we're not quite done with our torch, so hopefully you dropped it somewhere you'll find it again. If not, there is a spare that you can get from the tree pedestal, but thankfully I left the torch somewhere 
fairly prominent. So we're going to run around the corner and you may recall the campfire from the very beginning of the level. Once again, stand at a safe distance and you're able to light it on fire. And this causes a block to lower opposite the one that we just visited. Once again, be careful to drop the torch somewhere where you'll remember it, as we will need it one more time. So we can jump up this slope and crawl into this small cave. As you run inside, you'll hear the secret chime, and we'll be able to claim a large medkit and a crossbow. Now this is the final chance to grab the crossbow, just in case you missed it earlier in the level. I thought it would be a good idea to give players another chance to pick it up, as it may prove useful at the end of the level. In the meantime, let's run and grab our torch one more time, and we need to make our way back through the garden to the double doors that opened to reveal a stable. So let's follow this path around the corner and we'll find the double doors that opened. And inside there's a poor yak tethered by a rope. So we're going to run up and set this rope on fire. And this is going to allow the yak to escape from the stable and he's found some nice luscious grass outside to eat but where the yak was sitting there is a secret so pick up both the shotgun shells to claim the secret and we can go and say hi to the yak he's now looking very happy eating that grass now that we've claimed those secrets and we have the Summer Folly key, we need to make our way over to the Summer Folly. And that is the building just in front of us. So let's hop around this grassy area and use the Summer Folly key in the keyhole. And we'll then be able to finally find out what's inside this folly. So open the door. And as we enter, we'll find a very pleasant dining area. And there are a couple of items that we can claim in here. We can shoot these vases and find some bread. And we can also pick up some flares. Once we have claimed those, it's worth taking note of the pedestal between the two sideboards. And that is the place where we will need to use the Summer Challenge artifact once we have it. So ascend the ladder at the back of the room and we can take a look around this room and we'll see there is another teleport in here. So this is the final teleport and we will find ourselves now in the summer challenge area. I'm just making a save in a new slot and we find ourselves in a cistern section and a door just opened at the back of the room. This is actually blocking our path, so we need to find a way to close it. And the way that we do that is by pulling this chain. Now this is a fairly tricky timed run. This is probably the most difficult timed run in the level. And it requires us to hop on these two blocks in the water. This is going to be far quicker than swimming. Once we've crossed the water, we need to use the ledges in order to reach this shimmy crack. From here, it should be plain sailing, and all we can do is shimmy around as quickly as Lara will allow, and then pull up before the door raises. Made it. So we now find ourselves in a second cistern area and from here the quickest thing to do is simply to grab and drop and Lara will slide straight into a hidden area with an underwater switch. If we pull this switch, a trapdoor is going to lower in the middle of the pool and this small raft is going to raise up. Climb out of the water onto the raft and from here it's worth using our crossbow and laser sight as there's something that we can shoot in the water. 
This is just for a pickup, but every little helps. So shoot the pot and you will see there that has revealed some shotgun shells. I'm now going to draw my pistols and shoot the gem in the mouth of the gargoyle opposite. This is going to cause a water stream to flood this area. And we end up in a new area as the water level raises. But I'm actually going to swim back down and grab that ammo as I am likely to forget otherwise. Now the reason that I use the pistols and not the crossbow is because the crossbow doesn't seem to reliably shatter the gem. I find the pistols or the explosive crossbow ammo are the best things to use there. So climb out of the water and we find ourselves in a small village area. It's still night time and there's nobody around, so this leaves it clear for us to explore. Lara says, I can't get to the key because of the fire. There's a key suspended on the chain just above the fire, and as Lara said, we can't reach it yet, otherwise we'd be a little bit toasty. So instead we're going to shoot this window and run into this small shop. If we shoot the boxes, we can pick up some crossbow ammo. So that's all there is to find in the shop, so leave once again. And what we want to do is run outside, just to take a look around briefly. And what we want to do next is run around the pool, and on the pillar on the left of where we emerged, there is a crack. And we can use this crack to reach a higher ledge. So jump up, and as you can see, there are burners on these poles. And we're going to need to be pretty nippy if we want to time our way across them. I was pretty lucky with the sequence there. So making our way across the roofs, we can actually climb a ladder on the back of this chimney. But before we go up, I'm going to drop down into this small building. And there is some bread that you can find in this vase. So shoot the vase, claim the bread and we can ascend the ladder. I'm actually going to try using the jump and grab method. This is quite a handy way of ascending a ladder in a slightly quicker fashion than Lara's normal animation. I thought that was quite useful. I, uh, I do like to use that sometimes. And we can see here there are more pulleys. They are similar to the pulleys and ledges that we saw in the winter challenge section, except that the first of these is static when Lara runs on it. The second platform will lower, causing the platform in front of us to raise a little. This will allow us to jump on it and reach this alcove. It's also now flush with this platform, so we're able to push this large object onto it. And when we do, the platform will lower down to ground level. Now that we've done that, I am going to use the chain in front of us to safely descend to the ground. This will allow us to get down from that ledge without taking any damage. So I'm now going to move this large object out and I'm going to push it over to the fire. And you'll see what happens here in a moment. I'm not exactly sure what this object is meant to be. I think it's either a large bell or some kind of kiln. So I am moving it along, and as you can see, it is large enough so that we can push it right over the fire and deprive the fire of oxygen, which is going to extinguish the fire. And then this in turn will allow us to pull the object back out and claim the key that is hanging on that chain. I was quite chuffed with this puzzle idea. I like puzzles that utilise real life mechanics, like putting a fire out. So now we should be able to grab this key. Lara's sometimes a little bit stubborn and doesn't want to pick it up. So if she doesn't grab it first time, try just shuffling around the key until Lara will actually grab it. 
Let's just take a moment to appreciate this view. I really love this, especially all the flowers. This was actually inspired by photographs that I googled showing gardens in Tibet. I saw several examples of steps covered in flower pots and I wanted to try and recreate that here in the level. So place the key and we can run inside this sort of palace and if we have a look around there is a very nicely laid table now i would have put some more pickups around here but i literally pushed this level to its limits and i had no more movable object slots so i wasn't able to put any more pickups once again we have a fire pole but only one this time so it's a little easier to hop over and hopping to this upstairs area we found an axe and Lara says that she can use the axe in order to open the door back in the guardian's palace area. This is going to be pretty useful as you can imagine. So let's leave the palace and take a final look around. I originally intended to have some enemies attack Lara here but their AI was so dumb and they just ended up constantly running into a corner so I decided to lose them as I was already as I said up to the limits on movable objects so having a couple of useless enemies didn't really seem worth it. As you saw there earlier, we were shown a shot of the teleport, which is now reactivated, and we can swim back through the water and reach the teleport. And we find ourselves back in the upstairs area of the Summer Folly. So now we need to retrace our steps back to the Guardian's Palace. Another note on this area, especially in the Summer Challenge section, I did have a few problems with lag in this area and I did do my best to try and optimize this however some of the objects were more complex than they needed to be so I had to really cut back on the number of objects that I used which is a bit of a shame but I tried to make as much of a compromise between lag and looks as I could and hopefully I found the balance for most people's computers. Although the level may lag a bit on some older machines which is something I mention in the README. As you saw there, I used the ladder that I said we needed to remember earlier, and this is how I was able to reach the balcony of the Guardian's Palace area. You may remember earlier we used a snowdrift, so this time I used the ladder, and we can now use the axe on the final door, and in here we can claim the Summer Challenge artifact. We're then shown a handy camera view of where we need to use that artifact, back in the Summer Folly. So let's drop down from the balcony. The poor guardian is still lying there sick, but maybe we'll find a way to heal him shortly. So run back out into the garden and the Summer Folly is right opposite the guardian's palace. So let's make our way back over there. As we run past the lanterns, let's just take a moment to appreciate those. I really love those lantern objects, as well as the paper floating variety. I felt like they added a lot of atmosphere to the nighttime version of the garden. So, let's save our game and find out what happens when we place the final challenge artifact on its pedestal. We get some epic music and the beacon on top of the Summer Folly lights up. We pan around the garden and we can see lightning beams coming from each of the beacons. And as we pan around we can see that they converge in the centre of the garden and they have activated a portal. The portal is active. I can try and jump in there to reach the nether, Lara says. A final challenge has opened. Do I go there or straight to the portal? My choice may affect the outcome of this situation. We need to press escape to close that option. When we do, the doors on that structure at the top of the hill will open. 
So now we are faced with a dilemma. Do we go straight to the portal or do we check out that structure? I'm actually going to make an extra save here as I'm going to choose the first option which is head straight to the portal but I'm also then going to reload and show you what happens if you choose the second option. And when Lara was speaking of the outcome of the situation being changed, she was referring to the ending of the level. This level has two alternative endings and the choice we make here is crucial to determine which of the two endings we see. So I'm going to reuse the raising blocks from earlier and I'm going to hop back up onto this rock formation and this is going to allow me to jump into that portal. So I'm going to save. This jump can be a little tricky but you need to use the rock to the side of that golden plate jump as far as you can and we will find ourselves in a snowy desolate nether region grab a weapon as you'll be greeted by some snow leopards you may notice that there are some boulders above our head now these aren't going to activate yet but you might want to remember that they're there for later on this grand hall was kind of inspired partly by the final room in Tomb Raider Legend Nepal. It's also worth noting that there is a small pool of water in the floor, as that might come in useful. There's a vase at the back of the room, and if we shoot this, we can claim a piece of bread or small med kit. So now what we're going to do is run up to the gong at the back of the room, and we still have the gong stick that we used for the two gongs earlier in the level but first I'm going to equip my explosive ammo in the crossbow and then I'm going to use the gong and this is going to summon some deadly enemies I am going to utilize my crossbow it's best to take care of the lizards first and then turn your attention to the hammer guy and once you have killed him, a massive dragon is going to spawn in the center of the room. So we need to be pretty hasty here. Two blocks are lowered when the dragon is activated, and this allows us to reach the upper balcony area. And here we can find a crowbar switch with a rope, and using the crowbar switch is going to break the rope and there's a rope on each side. If we are nippy making it to the first switch, we can usually get there before the dragon starts shooting fire, but if you do get set on fire, then you can use that pool of water that I said to remember earlier. So use your axe on the second rope and make sure that you don't move from behind this platform as the dragon can kill you with his dying breath. With the ropes destroyed, the cauldron pours out onto the dragon and he explodes dramatically. But that's not quite it. Just when we think all is well, I've defeated the evil, but now I must hurry back to the portal. I'm injured. As we use this ledge to return to the entrance, we can see that Lara is injured. Her health bar is beginning to deplete. We can dodge those boulders that I told you to remember earlier, and we can see the portal in the sky and use this icy ledge to reach it. We could take a med kit to try and cure Lara, and while it would stop the distorted screen effect, it won't change the final outcome. Our heroine perished for a noble cause. She defeated the evil, and safety and harmony is restored to the garden and the rest of the world. So that was the final outcome. Lara perishes for the garden and the safety of the world. Thank you for playing Garden of the Four Seasons.
So that was the first ending. But would the outcome have been different had we chosen the other option? We are going to go back to our previous save and find out. But in the meantime, these are my final statistics for the first ending. You might see that my time there is a little bit quicker than the length of the video, and that's because the footage corrupted for the second half of the video, and I had to go back and re-record it, so I was a little bit faster completing the earlier sections this time around. So, back to the main menu, through the power of video game reloading, let's go back to our rather aptly numbered save 100 and see what would have happened had we chosen the alternative ending. Running up the steps, let's enter this structure. Slide down the slope and we find ourselves with a pressure plate in front of us. I'm going to save the game as this is the start of a pretty challenging timed run. This isn't called the extra challenge for nothing. It's worth remembering that door on our left as that is the final goal of this area. This trap section is a mixture of a lot of fire, rolling blades and teeth doors, so be very careful as you traverse this. However, in between these two teeth doors, there's a box we can push and underneath it you'll find a very valuable secret. It's a pair of Uzis, so claim that and we can then dodge our way through this door and the next blade and fire. Now, the timer on this section is actually fairly generous. It's just there to make you panic, basically, because the key to beating these traps is actually patience. You need to be very careful in timing your way through these. If you're too impatient, you generally get set on fire or get crushed by a teeth door. Be very careful here to give the active flame a wide berth, as it can set you on fire even if it's not touching you. So dodge through these teeth doors, and our goal is actually here on the right. This is where we can gain access to the central area that we've been running around this whole time. And once we're in this courtyard, we need to note the golden tiles that are in this pond. Some tiles are rotated differently to others, and some are illuminated. We need to jump on the three tiles that are illuminated, and we will then open the door, which I said was our ultimate goal for this area. Now, once you have opened that door, be very careful not to step off those tiles into the pond, as if you do that, you will close that door. The tile in front of the exit door was okay, as that simply reopens the exit if the timer has expired. So we're back in the original hallway, and all we need to do is dodge past the first flame. We've now arrived at our destination, which is an open area with crop fields, and if we run up to these baskets, we can pick up this bowl. We'll be shown a shot of the Guardian there, as well as an alcove that's opened to allow us a quick return back to the central courtyard. We've come full circle, and we need to go back to the courtyard, as we can't actually get back out of this area using the slope. We'll have to go via the courtyard roof. So run into the middle of the courtyard, and underneath the pagoda we will find another of these boxes or cabinets that we can move. So we're going to want to pull it out a couple of tiles, and this is going to allow us to reach something. 
So once we've finished moving it, we can climb on top of it and turn to our right. And here you can see a pole. And we can use this pole to reach a ledge, which will allow us to ledge jump to grab the edge of the roof. And we can stand on the edge of the roof. And if we run around this side, there are two windows that we can break, as well as a vase that we can break in somebody room. I think they're going to be a bit cross when they get back. <laughs> Return to the roof and we can now make our way through the other window. There's yet another vase to shoot in this room and both of these vases give us additional Uzi ammo to complement the secret that we found a few moments ago. Come to this alcove and you'll see that you're back at the top of the slope that you used to enter the challenge area. So jump up and there are some monkey bars you can grab and use those to traverse the gap. We're now back in the garden and we need to return to the guardian's palace. The bowl that we found amongst the crops contains some medicinal herbs. So we want to run up to the guardian and give him the bowl and hopefully this is going to help him. So we don't see any results straight away but Lara does say I hope these herbs will heal the guardian. Now I should enter the portal. So we get an additional secret for our troubles and this brings us up to a total of 12 secrets. This is all the secrets that you can find in the game. And now we should indeed do as Lara says. We're going to finally go over to the portal and hopefully this time we enter the result will be different. So let's run over to the raising platforms one final time. Throw the lever and let's hurry to climb on top of the central rock formation in the middle of the garden. And this is going to allow us to jump into that nether portal. Once again, we're going to need to watch our step as we jump in and jump as far as we possibly can. Now, I'm going to equip my explosive crossbow ammo ready for the battle, but this time we also have the option to use the Uzis. And as you can see, they dispatched the leopards pretty quickly. Once again, it's worth remembering that there are boulders at the top of this slope and let's take another look at this big area. You probably know the drill by now. We can drop down and I'm just going to run to the back of the room and claim the small med kit or bread that's inside that vase and then we can use the gong and ready ourselves for the ensuing battle. So run back to the gong and make sure that you have your weapon of choice selected. I'm going to start off with the Yuzis I'm going to use those for the lizards and then I'm going to use explosive ammo on the larger boss. So let's target the lizards using the look button. If you tap the look you cycle between enemies so it's a good way of changing Lara's aim in the Tomb Raider 4 engine. So grab out the crossbow and we're going to kill the big boss. I find the explosive ammo or the shotgun to be the most effective options here. And our prize for defeating that boss is an even bigger boss, the dragon. So once again we need to make haste and run and grab the wall ledges and pull up and run around and cut the ropes with our axe. And this is going to allow us to pour the lava and the cauldron above the dragon's head on top of the dragon, making him explode. So that's the first one. Let's run quickly to the second. The pillars do mostly shield you from the fire, but he does occasionally get a sneaky shot around the pillar. So do be careful and basically just be as quick as you can. When we are at the switch, we are protected by that slope in front of us. 
So it's important to stay behind that slope even while the cutscene is playing. As you could see there, he shot fire and if I'd been out from behind that slope, he would have killed me. So I'm going to drop back down and once again, all is not well. I've defeated the evil. Now I must hurry back to the portal. I'm injured. So once again, we can see that Lara has the woozy injured poison effect. So be very careful to dodge the boulders on your way out, especially with the distorted screen. If you hate that, you can get rid of it with a med kit, but it's not going to change the fact that Lara is mortally wounded. Or is she? Let's climb on top of the ice and make the final jump into the portal. It transpires that the Guardian, who we healed with the herbs, has come to our aid. So, was he in time to save Lara? I'm alive! The Guardian tells us that he found us just in time, and that he was able to use the herbs that we used to heal him to in turn heal Lara. And we have done a great deed today. We have the Guardian's thanks. My pleasure, says Lara. And everyone, that is the end of Garden of the Four Seasons. That was the good ending. So, as you can see there, those are my final statistics. As I explained earlier, the time might be a little bit inconsistent with the video, as I had to re-record the second half of my playthrough due to sound issues with the video. So, I might have played a bit faster when I replayed the first part of the game. I also managed to avoid using any health kits. With the good ending, we also found all 12 of the secrets. This was in some ways the intended ending, but I thought it would be really interesting to create a game that had two alternative endings, to give people the choice of which option they wanted to go for, and have a different story outcome according to which one people chose. As I don't think this is a concept that I've ever seen in a Tomb Raider custom level before. With this game, I also wanted to create a big, open environment, as close as you can get to an open world game in a Tomb Raider custom level environment. And I hope I was able to achieve this feel within the constraints of the Tomb Raider 4 engine. I'd also had the concept of a landscape or a garden that changes throughout the seasons in my head for a long time. I didn't have any ideas for puzzles or how I would realise this, but after I'd been looking at this Back to Basics package for a while, I suddenly realised that I had the ingredients that I needed to bring this idea to life. And I never could have imagined the scale or scope of the final level and puzzles. I literally pushed all the boundaries with this level. I ran out of rooms on the level map. I had three copies of the main garden hub, and this is how I was able to achieve the seasonal changes. And I had to resort to a flip map for the final seasonal change because I ran out of rooms. So that's a bit of behind the scenes insight into the development process of this level. However, before I sign off the video, I want to take a moment to say a massive thank you to everyone who played this level and reviewed it. And a thank you to all of you that loved it. It turns out that this level is actually the winning level of Back to Basics 2020 and I literally cannot believe it still. So thank you so much everyone who has played this level and enjoyed it. 
I hope you have also enjoyed this author playthrough. If you have enjoyed it, please do consider liking and subscribing for any future level related videos that I release. But until next time, I will leave you with a couple of final screenshots from the level. Thank you for watching everyone. This is Agent XP, TTFN.